This tissue topper is a great way to hide those unsightly tissue boxes while giving it a cute and modern flair. It's so easy to make and I can't wait to show you how. Stay tuned! For a full list of supplies, please see the description box below. Begin by taking a measurement of the width and the height of your box. This is the measurement of my box. Then I'm going to use double strands held together of worsted weight yarn for this demonstration. This just makes it sturdy. And then I'm going to make a chain that is slightly smaller than the size of the top of my box. You want it to be slightly smaller because we were going to be doing an edging round. Now you will turn Skip your first chain and make a single crochet in the second chain from your hook and in each stitch across. When you get done, it should look like this. It should be slightly smaller than the inside of the box's width. Remember, we're going to do an edging round. Now you're going to chain one and turn. You will place one single crochet in each stitch across. Chain one and turn. Place one single crochet in each stitch across. You're going to keep doing that until you reach the center of the box. For me, the center will be about two inches wide. So here are my pieces, it measures two inches. I've got six rows, and it looks like the center. So now we're going to create the other panel. Count your stitches across and make sure you remember how many you have. Then you're going to chain that number plus two. The two will count as turning chains. So single crochet in the second chain from your hook and in each stitch to the end. Be sure you do not place a stitch in the last chain. Remember that counts as a turning chain. When you are done, you will need to make sure that you have the same amount of single crochet on your chain as you do on your other panel. Now you will chain one and turn. Place a single crochet in every stitch across. You are going to be making another panel exactly like the other one. So here my panel is halfway done and this will be the opening. Now I'm going to continue making the same amount of rows. So I have two here and I need to add four more to make it even on both sides. So here I have six rows on each panel and they look exactly the same. It should be just barely smaller than the size of the top of your box. Now we're going to create an edging round. So you will chain one and turn and place one single crochet in each row across. So you should have six single crochets in your first panel. Now we're going to join the other panel and you will place one single crochet in each row across to the end. So when you are done, you should have 12 single crochets. This is what your piece should look like. Don't worry about the center. We're going to clean that up later by adding a round of single crochet. So now we're going to continue working down the other side. You will chain one and place a single crochet in the same stitch 
and in each stitch to the end. Chain one and turn, we're gonna work down the other side. Place one single crochet in the same stitch and in each row down the side. You should have 12 single crochet just like you did on the opposite side. Now chain one and turn. We'll place one single crochet in the same stitch and in each stitch across. Now we are going to slip stitch into the top of our first stitch. As you can see, it is the exact size as the top of our box, maybe slightly larger, which is what you want. Now we're going to work our way down the box. We're going to be working in the back loops only. Chain one and place one single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch around, including the chain one space. If you do not do a single crochet in the chain one, then it will be too small. So here I am at the chain one. I'm going to put a single crochet in the back loop only of that chain. And I'm going to continue in the round. I'm not increasing. So you're going to continue in this manner all the way till you get to the very first single crochet. When you get there, you will need to grab a stitch marker because we're going to be working in the continuous round. So now I'm going to go through both loops and I'm going to make a single crochet in that first stitch. I'm going to place a stitch marker in the top of my stitch here so that I know where the beginning of my round is. I'm going to continue placing one single crochet in every stitch around until I get about a half inch away from the bottom of the box. I'm going to do that because I'm going to add beads and that will add two more rounds which will be about a half of an inch. So if you are adding beads to your Kleenex box topper then you are going to want to stop about a half inch down. Here I am I'm going to show you I have done a few rounds here and I'm going to show you how it should fit. You want it to be fairly snug but you don't want it to be too loose. To me, this is perfect. So this is what it should look like. And I'm just gonna keep going in the round till I get to about a half inch from the bottom. As you can see, I'm about a half inch away from the very bottom. Now you want to pay special attention to the beads that you use. They must have a big enough center to go over two strands of your yarn if you're making yours like mine. Now if you've noticed, I have fastened off and the reason is is because I did not want to deal with all of these beads on my yarn while I worked. So I fastened off and I'm going to add these beads to my working yarn and then rejoin right here. So now I'm going to place a bead in every other stitch and I'm going to show you how to do that as I go in the round. So here I'm going to join with a slip stitch. I'm going to make one single crochet and then I'm going to place the bead as close to my hook as I can get it and I'm going to chain one. And then I'm going to skip a stitch and single crochet in the next stitch. Then I'm going to place a bead next to my hook as tight as I can get it and chain one. I'm going to skip a stitch 
and place a single crochet in the next stitch. I'm going to continue this process of making a single crochet, placing my bead, chaining one tightly, skipping a stitch, and making another single crochet. Your beads will want to pop forward and backward. Don't worry about that. We're going to fix that in a little bit. So just keep going, chaining one, skipping one, and single crocheting. All the way around till you get to the end. Here I am at the end. I'm going to continue working in the round, but I did slip stitch to join, so I'm going to chain one and make a single crochet in the top of the first single crochet. Now, if you'll notice, it is very hard to get your hook right there in the top of that stitch. So instead of going in the top of the chain one, I'm going to do a drop stitch down into the single crochet that I skipped in the round below. So then I'm going to make a single crochet in the top of the next single crochet. And that just keeps it from coming towards the back. It keeps it coming forward. So I'm going to show you again. I'm going to make a drop stitch single crochet in the single crochet two rounds below that I skipped. And then I'm going to single crochet in the top of the single crochet. Just continue in this manner all the way around. You will notice that making that drop stitch really makes a difference in how your beads stay put. I'm done with the round following the beads. And at this point, it will depend on how big your stitches are to know for sure if you're done. So what I do is I put a stitch marker in the last stitch and I just put it over the box to see if I need to do another round or not. So here mine is, and it looks like I need to do another round. It's not completely covering the box. I don't want any of it peeking out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another round, just placing one single crochet in each stitch around, and then I'm going to fasten off. And then I'm gonna show you how to finish the top part where the slot is. So I finished the other round. I think it looks really nice, and I'm very pleased with how it fits the box. As you can see, it completely covers the box, and it looks a lot better. So now we're going to focus on making the seam of the slot a little bit nicer. So go ahead and fasten off. Don't worry about those ends. You can weave them in later. And we're going to do a finishing round to the top opening. So I'm going to a smaller hook here, and I'm just using one strand of yarn. I'm going to join with a slip stitch. Chain one. And then just simply place one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. You could also realistically loosely slip stitch if you wanted it to be slightly tighter. It's up to you. If you're using a thicker yarn, I definitely would do slip stitches. Just don't do them too tightly. I'm going to speed up the video so you don't have to watch me do every stitch. When you get to the end, simply just slip stitch in the top of your first single crochet and then fasten off and weave in your tails. This is how it should look. As you can see, it looks so much nicer. Now for the fun part, the embellishment. 
I'm choosing to add three tassels like I did on this one. So I'm going to make the tassels using my fingers. If you'd like, you can use a piece of cardboard. I wrap the yarn around my fingers about 15 to 20 times. Whatever you decide to do, just do it consistently. Then I'm going to cut another strand of yarn that will anchor it to the Kleenex box. So what you need to do is find the very center of the front and then you're going to evenly space them apart. If you want yours just like mine, I space mine about three to four rows apart. So as you can see, I'm just kind of playing around with it to see where I want to put the first one. So if you want, you could fold it in half and see where the center is, or you can just count across. So here it looks like I found the center, and I'm going to place my first tassel anchor here. So I'm going to take that strand of yarn that I cut and attach it like you would fringe on a blanket. Just slide it through. And I'm going to do that two more times. I'm just going to count until I found evenly spaced rows. So I'm just counting how many rows I have, and then I'm going to divide it. So it looks like I have four rows in between each tassel. So I'm going to do the same process I did before, which is attach this strand like fringe on a blanket, and this will anchor the tassels. So here I have all three placed evenly and in a row. So you just want to make sure it's centered as much as possible. So I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way to the top. Open the tails of the fringe. Place your tassel tails inside the two strands. And then just simply tie it in a knot to hold it in place. You're going to repeat this process two more times. Now we are going to tie a strand of yarn around the top of each tassel so that it holds the tassel together and helps it keep its shape. So I just cut a strand of yarn and I'm going to tie the top so that the tassel will have more shape. Now you will want to cut the ends of your tassel to where they are even. And you're going to want to repeat this process to the remaining tassels. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today. If so, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.